Blizzard has blasted us once again with a whole bunch of 9.1 information, which also indicates that maybe this patch is coming sooner than we think. Let's take a look. Wow, wow, wow. Let's kick it off with the raid, the Sanctum of Domination that is coming out. In an interesting move, Blizzard has posted that they are doing four boss tests on Thursday and then following that with an LFR test as well. This is a huge amount of testing that they're doing on Thursday of this week and only posted this yesterday, uh, which was hugely bizarre. Um, the last time I saw this much testing in one one night was, I think, Miss of Pandaria, and that was only four things. They're now testing five things, four of them being mythic bosses and the fifth being Syl uh, the and the other one being Sylvanas Windrunner herself. We will finally get to see what that encounter entails. Um, this has led to a lot of speculation, but let me talk about the raid real quick. A lot of people asking my opinion on this. I'm not going to put my judgment on this raid yet. I have not tested it. And without playing it, I can't tell you exactly how I feel about it. What I can say is I've been in a lot of conversation with a lot of people who've done all this testing, and so far the opinion is meh to negative. Um, but they're changing a lot of the bosses. So I don't want you to go, oh, who's saying that? Who's saying that? That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is the initial versions of these fight are one, very, very easy. They're in spectacular scenarios. Like the environments and inside the Sanctum of Domination look spectacular. But mechanics-wise... Very, very simple. A lot of meteors to share. A lot of tanks running out like Zymox. That's reused like four or five times. It's just lots of repeated stuff that's not particularly difficult to deal with. Ergo, the, the raid leaves you a little flat. The only really positive boss I've heard from is Kel'Thuzad. Everything else has been like, yeah, it's kind of okay, but... <clears throat> you know, it's... Ugh. But Blizzard has been changing these bosses near enough daily and updating them and altering them and turning them up to 12, especially with the feedback that nearly all mythic bosses, we can tell by your top guilds, were killed in their first pull. Uh, that's not a good sign. As uh, <laughs> one of them put it, that at least we hit the enrage on the first pull, so it's not exactly a hard fight. Uh, which is not a good sign. And we saw tweets about this going out. It's like, you really need to make this more difficult. Otherwise, this raid is just going to fall over. As, and they are doing that. We've seen a lot of additions come to the Dungeon Journal. of them modifying these fights, changing them. So at this point, putting judgment on the Sanctum of Domination, impossible. Uh, so I'm going to reserve my judgment there. Be sure to check out channels like Signs of Kalani, who has some videos on these. And just to witness these spectacular environments... Uh, but be wary, the mechanics are changing a lot for certain fights. Nearly every single fight, as far as we know, has been altered in some way. Uh, so on the back of all this testing, then, this has led to some speculation. We haven't seen this amount of testing since Miss of Pandaria, uh, which is something they stopped doing. Typically, they will do two, sometimes three bosses, uh, that, that amount of encounters. We haven't seen four in a really, really long time. And five is kind of unheard of, really, although one of them is the LFR test. So, why are they doing this? Well, one obvious answer is the patch is coming, and they usually stop raid testing like a month before the patch comes out, so we could be looking at a month until the raid releases. That's cool. Uh, is all this testing in one big go a good idea? But they do have other events running, including the launch of the Burning Crusade uh, coming later. Typically, you would say, well, if the Burning Crusade is coming next week then, and you, you want to get all the testing done, just do the testing after. But if 9.1 is coming very, very soon, they don't have time to do that, so they need to push all the testing up to this week um similarly another point of view that's been pointed out is that mythic raid testing on the ptr has become less and less relevant this isn't a new idea and i don't want anyone to to hear this and think oh right this is a new thing no if you check even raid testing videos back from battle for azeroth it was very noticeable that mythic raid testing was in decline uh feedback was also extremely low you can check a lot of those threads and only a couple of posts per boss so blizzard wasn't getting much out of it other than the statistical data that they're pulling themselves from the people doing the encounters and what they can see themselves as the gms do come into the encounters and kind of watch what's going on uh this is not unsurprising though we have the world first race which means if you are a mythic raiding guild you will get considerably more information on the day of the world first race you will not only see the exact strategies to be done on the live version of these bosses but you'll also see the raid comps you'll see all that kind of stuff live in person what works what doesn't you'll figure it out right there right then therefore pulling your group together to join a ptr to test potentially broken bosses 
not a particular worthwhile uh, use of your time. Uh, so it's been dropping off dramatically, especially with people making videos like myself and showing off the encounters. And this is what this looks like. You might not be able to get the good idea from the Dungeon Journal, but you can see it in a video really clearly and get as much information from that video on your own time rather than logging onto a PTR and dealing with all the lag issues, etc. that happen there for your Mythic Raid team. So it has become much more commonplace to sort of devalue the idea of Mythic Raid testing, where Heroic's usually a lot of fun. Uh, it's very relaxed. You could take your entire roster. Of course, Mythic Raid testing requires a set amount of people, which means you have some people who log onto a PTR, they copy their car ca uh, character over, they update their add-ons, they do all that stuff to sit there on a Thursday night and maybe only get to do half an hour's worth of testing. Uh, so it's, it's not that surprising to me that maybe Mythic Raid testing is dropping in its value for Blizzard and for the players simultaneously. And they're just kind of letting the limits and echoes and the pieces of the world do all the, do all the heavy lifting and everybody else will just watch the video when the, the world first race is live. So, likely scenario. Probably a combination of both. Might actually involve none of those things, but we could probably expect to see patch 9.1 coming in late June. Uh, beginning of July, uh, based on this schedule, unless some of the bosses are absolutely broken, because they are doing a lot of changes, in which case they might jump back into it. Uh, let's jump over to Mythic Plus, where we had some indication of what is going to be our new Domination Affix. Uh, and this looks like it could be very, very cool, although it is data mine stuff, a lot of speculation as to exactly how this has worked. I would call for our regular viewers Legendary Ring at this point. Just be careful, but it looks like anima powers will be some have some effect inside of Mythic Plus in terms of reversing the effects of the affixes onto the enemies. So some things have been data mined about putting volcanic onto the enemies, things like that. And that could lead to all kinds of speculation, and including like moving necrotic over. We've seen that one. Uh, how is bursting going to work? How exactly is explosive going to work? All these kinds of crazy ideas. Just be careful on, on letting your imagination run wild here because that could get real wacky real quick and you might end up with none of those things. Uh, so just be a little careful. Blizzard haven't confirmed it, but these spells are appearing on the PTR, which means Blizzard's probably leaning over there. The last time we talked about this with the devs, they said they had a number of Mythic Plus affixes that they were ch testing out to be the new seasonal affix, and they hadn't decided which way to go. So this could be, and this has happened several times on PTR testing, a remnant of an old build of something they were trying, and hasn't quite worked out so i'm just saying watch yourselves with letting your imagination run wild before you start predicting yourself reflecting and uh anti seeing things and doing all sorts of wacky and putting quaking inside a massive mob of ca uh, massive camp of casters uh and seeing what you could do with quaking affix inside there and things like that uh although it could be i am excited for it and as soon as it is available we will test that out uh the last thing i wanted to talk about actually was torgas we now have the scoring system what i can tell is i've done a couple of runs now on the new torgas the level 12 torgas what it looks looks like to me at least at a anecdotal level is they've made this much much easier now to get the crystal scores almost to the point of it not being super relevant anymore which i think is what they've decided to do that would make sense to me considering you we had that scenario that was occurring the last time we looked at torgast a couple of weeks ago where if you didn't get a certain amount of crystals uh, at the end of your score out of five then you just had to redo the floor again for nothing, for no other reason than just to try and get a better score, uh, which was very, well, potentially extremely irritating to a lot of players. Uh, I just did a couple of runs here. I, uh, To give context, I never got five crystals on the level 12 run, despite running it five or six times previously. This time I got level, I got five, I got five stars every single time. Uh, now we also have the score breakdowns, so we can figure out how they're calculating the score. There is a completion bonus out of 100, so it's based on a percentage. Uh, in the screenshot you can see here, I got 99%. I have no idea what I missed. Did I miss a pot? Did I miss something? I don't know. You then get a time bonus. Uh, so you can see I got an 80% time empowered. This is how long you are maintaining your empowerment uh, for going fast, which is exactly what we suspected was the case previously. Remember I said it feels like the entire scoring system is based on how long your character is empowered. 
that is now showing in the scoreboard. So yes, we were accurate on that one. That gives you a bonus score. There are so also some extra points. Speed Demon for going particularly fast. Hunter for finding everything. Plunderer for looting everything. Collector for getting actually using anima powers. Although these give a really minor bonus. You can see like getting over 30 powers gave me 10 points. Executioner for killing the boss very quickly gave me 10 points. Uh, ultimately, I, it looks like you need to get over 200 in order to get a good score, which I did both times. And I even, uh, to be clear here, I even took a break uh, halfway through because I was kind of curious on my second run. And the, the screenshot you're seeing is actually my second run. I took a break. I had my dinner uh, and then finished the run. And it was still fine. <laughs> It was still absolutely fine. Uh, so I got the flawless victory for doing that. Although clearly it's not flawless because I had 99% of completion. And completion was just done... I didn't go out of my way to do it either. I just clicked the things that were near me. And the fact is you can go really fast. Uh, one bug I have reported to Blizzard and I hope does not make it to live is I told you that one of the bonuses that you can learn from the box of many things is that anima is auto-looted to your character. That appears now to be, like, half broken. You guys will have seen this before when you go to do, like, AoE loot and just for some reason some of the mobs do not get looted. This is a system that's supposed to automatically loot things to you, so you're not supposed to have to click things on the floor. Very regularly there was just mobs that that didn't work for and I had to manually loot it. I hope that gets fixed because it's really, really frustrating. Uh, going back on the Torments and the Blessing system, what I can tell you is, considering they seemingly, and this is anecdotal again, that they have made Torghast easier to, in order to get the five stars, the Blessings and Torments were insignificant. I didn't notice them at all. Uh, I actually forgot, and this is no meme, I forgot that they existed until the second run. So in the first run I did, I didn't even notice the torments. I forgot that system had even been implemented. In the second run, they had given the subjugator power to random enemies. You might remember if you've done Torghast, the purple subjugator enemy that puts the lines on the floor and permanently debuffs you. And one of the enemies put that out. And I was like, oh, I thought initially they changed the graphic on Massive Strike. But then I was like, oh, I checked. I was like, oh, yeah, there's Torments. And I checked it. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, these, these, This is a thing now. <laughs> it wasn't particularly relevant to me. So that's good news. I would take that as good news is that Torghast, uh, in order to get your Soul Cinders, once again falls into the trap of it being mandatory. So they've made it seemingly pretty easy. Uh, but at the same time, it's not particularly fun either. So we're still in that boat, uh, unfortunately. It, it, nothing seems to have actually really changed here, despite the addition, and this was kind of my criticism of it early on, is they've added a whole bunch of stuff to Torghast, yet the net effect on the player seems uh, negligible. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, but no, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, so my commentary will remain the same on that. By the way, thank you very much for listening, guys. Let's look forward to more uh, 9.1 information, and hopefully we should have a release date very, very soon. Thank you again. Bye-bye.